my first baby. I was a very young bride, or at least I felt I was a very young bride. I was 19. Um, straight from Paris to North Wales, Puffelli. So it was a big change of culture, apart from being a Welsh, very Welsh area. It was also the seaside, the countryside, the farm life. My uh, ex-husband was a dairy farmer. And I think after a few weeks and months, I realised I was going to be bored. I tried very hard to find jobs. Not easy. Um, I wanted to, they wanted to train a hairdresser, but they said, no, you're married, you could have a baby. So anyway, all my efforts to have some, give my life meaning had failed. So I thought, well, I'll have a baby then. Uh, my first baby I lost, which was a great disaster for a young girl to lose one first baby. But anyway, eventually, I became pregnant again. What I didn't tell anybody was that deep down, I didn't have a clue about what it entailed to be a mum, what I would have to do. And instead of discussing it, perhaps finding somebody who was a mother, who could have given me advice and guidance, I just pushed it out of my mind. Basically, it was all swept under the carpet. I just enjoyed collecting all my baby things. And I felt well blooming during my pregnancy. So that's all I did. And of course, when I had my child, disaster struck. I became depressed. My baby, for some mysterious reason, refused to feed. She wouldn't suck. It took three nurses in hospital to get her to breastfeed successfully. And I thought, well, it's all very well, but when I'm at home, I, I shan't have three nurses around me. What am I going to do? So I decided to give her the bottle, much to my mother-in-law's horror. I was a disgrace, I wasn't breastfeeding my child, dreadful, never mind. I stuck to my bottle, but she still wouldn't feed. It made no difference. She would not suck. I mean, she did eventually, but it was hard work. So, basically, I started to get depressed. Did, could find I couldn't tell anybody because it was, I felt ashamed of being depressed. But there was one consolation. I think to start with, it was every day, the little nurse used to come to visit to help me and she arrived so that's uh, the morning she arrived i remember and she was like a breath of fresh air she was so full of energy she made you feel quite ill hello and how are you and right show me bath the baby now i didn't tell her but i had no intention whatsoever of bathing the baby i was going to top and tail my baby as often as i possibly could I thought, well, a baby doesn't get dirty, it doesn't go anywhere, so it'll do, of course. So where's the bath? Well, the bath was stuck right on top of the bedroom cupboard, really high up, high up and she was a tiny woman. Well, I had to find a chair, we had to get that, and she, she started getting cross. She said, oh, really, your husband should have got that bath down. The kitchen was littered with my husband's cooked breakfast thing because in those days I used to cook him a full breakfast. Being a farmer he needed food so there were things everywhere, the grid pan, the dishes, there wasn't a space so we had to clear that. Right, well where is the soap? Where is this? Well for some reason while I was pregnant instead of putting things in a logical order everything was everywhere. There was a soap in one drawer, there was a towel in another so that took ages. Right, then we had to undress the baby. Anyway, we finally, I think we finally got there, and I was clumsy, I kept passing her the wrong thing. The poor woman, I don't know how she put up with me. Anyway, in the end, that baby was fast, dressed, she screamed, but... And then the little nurse said, oh, have you got a ladies' room? Now, of course, in our little annex, this is how we called a part of the house, there was no bathroom. So I said, oh yes, we use my mother-in-law's room. I had to show her, so that meant going through the other part of the house. And I showed her who it was, and waited, and waited, and waited. And she never came back. Well, after a while, I thought, well, where is she? I thought, I'd better go and look for her. Well, she was lost. She was wandering along the corridors, because my mother-in-law's house was big. And there was all these doors on the landing. There was, must have been... I don't know, 10 doors, <laughs> and she couldn't find my door. 
so she was wandering all over the place lost right anyway i said oh i'm sorry i should have known i should have come to find you sooner because she didn't dare open just any door so anyway she was back in my kitchen and again so full of energy right she said well i shall see you tomorrow and she grabs the handle of the door and the handle of the door remains in her hand now what had been happening was that the handle had broken and all it took i think was a couple of screws to mend it but nick being busy he hadn't got round to it and we used to laugh because what we found is if we removed the handle on the outside of the door it acted as or the other way around or maybe on the inside it that's right if you remove the handle on the inside it acted as a lock you could not open it from the outside and we laugh with that well that's handy we've got a lock so if we leave it like that we just take the handle out at night and it acts as a lock so we just pushed it back so of course when she went like that not knowing it remained in the hand oh and she said oh my goodness i am so sorry she said no 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 don't be sorry we do it on purpose <laughs> and she thought we were a bunch of nutcases in that house and i thought i'll never see her again but i did she came back the next day there we go Yeah.